worship today. It is a delight to have you here joining us and worshiping with us today. Our worship today is a special worship. It's a worship of celebration as we gather together with worship leaders, our worship leaders, our Stephen ministers and leaders have joined us as we celebrate the ministry of Stephen ministry and my commissioning into this ministry. I have a couple other announcements to share with you this morning. First of all, uh, just a reminder, if you have baked goods for the May Hearts and Hope bags, please get them to Sarah Jurdy today from 9 to 3 today. Um, see this week's email, e-news, for more information. We also continue to hold in prayer Doug and Carleen, Merlin, Elna, Chuck, Joanne, Mary Lou, and Dan in our prayers. May God provide comfort, healing, strength, and peace for them and those who love and care for them. Let us begin worship. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship with a time of confession and forgiveness. Let us pray. Loving God, we confess that at times we do not share in the joy of the resurrection, but are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of new life, but remain discontent, grumbling, and anxious. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it more comfortable to worry and complain than to risk the joy and encouragement of new life in Christ. Call us back to your ways, O oh God, to seek hope and reconciliation, restoration and peace. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Christ is risen. The stone is rolled away. The tomb is found empty. Mary cries out, I have seen the Lord. We have seen Christ too. In every helping hand, in every heartfelt gift, and every choice to restore life in this world. We are called to this new life, a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. You are forgiven in Jesus' name. Accept your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Walk forward on this journey of faith knowing your brothers and sisters are with you. Amen.
Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the commun the community of communion, hope, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, you have created us and know every part of us, and you have sent our Lord Jesus to heal our lives. Thank you that he shows compassion upon our physical illness and upon those barriers that lock us out of life with others. We praise you that he touches us, purifies us, and restores us. As his people, we dedicate ourselves to finding the lost, including the unacceptable, and caring for everyone, knowing that each person is your own dear child. We pray in the name of Jesus, who took our infirmities and carried away our diseases. Amen. chapter 4 verses 7 through 21 we love God and others because God first loved us we cannot say we love God whom we have not seen while hating fellow Christians whom we regularly see love toward God is to be matched by love toward others because the essence of God is love beloved let us love one another because love is from God Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. For God is love. God's love is revealed among us in this way. 
God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God and they abide in God. So we have known and believe in the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 22, verses 25 to 31. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow down before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down and worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. today according to the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter. A leper came to him begging and kneeling, and he said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, and said to him, I do choose. Be, make, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, Jesus sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest, and offer your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into town openly, but stayed out in the country and people came from every quarter. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. 
Jesus reached out his hand. Jesus touched the man with leprosy. And in that touch, the man with leprosy was healed. Can you imagine the scene? A man with a bacterial infection that had sores all over his skin that affects the skin and the nerves of his hands and of his feet, his nose and throat and eyes. He was a mess. He was an outcast. He was shunned. But yet, he asked Jesus, if you are willing, make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand, reached out and touched the man. Jesus healed the man with a touch. Jesus' ministry is all about Jesus touching and connecting with people. Oftentimes, people who didn't feel worthy of being touched or society says they weren't worthy of being touched, or they were so desperately longing for healing or relief, they reached out. Sometimes Jesus went to people with a touch, and the recipient may or may not have known they needed, but experienced healing and wholeness beyond what they could imagine. Jesus knew the power of touch and connection. Jesus there at creation knew that we are created to be connected with each other. A touch on the shoulder, a handshake, a pat on the back, a hug, hands joined together in prayer. It's who we are created to be. And this story is so important for us all. It's been, this has been one of the hardest parts of this past year. The missing of connection. The missing of touch. One of my favorite stories about the healing power of connection and touch is the story of Joseph Merrick. That name may not be familiar to you, and if I told you he suffered from neurofibromatosis, that probably wouldn't help either. But if I told you Joseph Merrick spent a large part of his life as part of a traveling human exhibition show, being displayed as the elephant man, you may have an idea who he was. After years of being put on display with people laughing and shouting jeers at him, words of toy torment flung at him, Joseph had almost completely withdrew to himself. He wasn't, and when he wasn't on display, he would wear a sack over his head to hide his disfigured face. That was until one day, when Joseph was 22, he met a man, Dr. Treves, who took him to a hospital and gave him a permanent residence supplying him with his own private bedroom, a sitting room, and his own bathroom. He was no longer on display. And it was one of two pivotal events in Joseph's life. All he could say in his room was, this is my home? This is my home? This is my home. Another transformational event in Joseph's life occurred when a young hospital staffer would en entered his room, smiled at him, and wished him good morning, and then reached and shook his hand. The first time, and for days after, Joseph would sob uncontrollably. Other than his mother, she was the first person who smiled at him and who had touched him. 
Those two transformational pivotal events allowed Joseph to begin to dare to step out of the darkness that he withdrew to for safety. And he began to love to see when the door was opened again. He found a place of acceptance. Others engaged him and saw him who he was, a beloved child of God, loved and accepted precisely for who he was. Someone cared for Joseph and changed his life. Someone who looked past appearances and saw a suffering, beloved child of God. He had always been untouchable. But by a touch, by human connection, he felt himself included in humanity. I want to invite you to take a look at this banner behind me. This is a Stephen Ministry logo, and it's, if we were together in worship, I would ask you to tell me what you see. But today I help, I'll help you. We see a person that looks broken, a cross and a person that looks whole. The beauty of this symbol is that sometimes missed and misinterpreted. For you see, this broken person represents the brokenness of humanity. The brokenness and the wounds, the grief and the burdens we all face at times in our lives. We all can identify times in our lives where our brokenness as human beings are painfully evident. Then there's the cross. The redemptive healing power that is ours through Christ Jesus. The cross brings us there. And then we have the whole person. Sometimes this is mistaken to say that this is the Stephen the minister receiving the care, and this is the Stephen minister. But that is not true. Here's what the whole person represents. We all are in the brokenness of humanity. And it's only through the cross through Christ, touching our lives, that we are made whole. Stephen Ministry is a phenomenal part of our congregation and has been for 25 years. Over this time, Stephen Ministers have been trained to provide Christ-centered care and accompaniment for those experiencing brokenness in their lives. A loss of a job or a loss of a loved one. A loss of a hope or a dream. Sometimes it's a life altering or life ending diagnosis of yourself or a loved one. It can even be and has been the impact of the pandemic and how that has, cons how that has created difficulty, stress, loneliness, and anxiety. Our Stephen ministers are available to provide Christ-centered care and support. You know, that touch, that human connection, a reminder that even in our brokenness, we are not alone. But even more so, Stephen ministry, along with all of Hosanna's ministries, we proclaim that we are the hands and feet of Christ. And that makes a difference in this world. As I am commissioned as a Stephen leader today, I give thanks for all the Stephen ministers and leaders that have gone before me. I give thanks for the current 
Stephen Ministries and leaders that are welcoming me in to this ministry. But I want to extend an invitation on behalf of myself and them as well. First of all, if you find yourself facing a challenge or loss, please reach out. Give me a call or any of the people that you have seen assisting in worship today. We can have a more in-depth discussion about what it, having a Stephen minister is about and see if that's something you're interested in. Or, is God calling you to be part of this ministry as a Stephen minister who provides care or a Stephen leader who works in the training and the leading and the administration of this program. God is calling. I want you to think if God is calling you, how God is calling you to be part and engage with this ministry. Again, speak to any of us leading worship today. We would love to talk to you more about Stephen Ministries. Beloved people of Hosanna, as a family of faith, we are gathered to grow together in our faith. And we're being sent to serve, being the hands and feet of Christ to one another in this world. I invite you all now, yes, everyone, not just me, not the Stephen ministers or leaders, we are all sent to serve. May we dedicate our hands to God's service. As Jesus' hands were all his life. Take a moment now. Look at your hands. Christ that was born on Christmas Day laid upon the world his two small hands, lifting it worlds and worlds away up to the level of love's demands. And those hands hold, though pierced with nails, they still hold still in power and pain. Love comes to his own to reign. May our lives, our feet, our hands, share Christ's love May they share Christ's love each day so others may experience the touch, the love from God above. People of Hosanna, may your hands, may your feet, may your lives share Christ's love so that those that we meet, their lives are touched by God's love from above. Thanks be to God, and I thank God for each and every one of you. You make a difference in this world.
and our Stephen ministry program is a powerful way we have committed to living out that care. Today we are specifically recognizing Pastor Krista Strum as a new Stephen leader. She will be joining with other Stephen leaders who organize, teach, and supervise our Stephen ministers. The trained caregivers who provide high quality, one-to-one -one care for hurting people in our, in our congregation and community. I invite Pastor Christus to step forward. Pastor Krista, you have been trained in the Stephen Ministry Bridge Leaders Training Course and have been asked to serve as Stephen Leader at Hosanna Lutheran Church. You are a gift of God to us, helping lead this ministry of equipping and caring. As part of the priesthood of all believers, all of us Christians are called to offer ourselves to our Lord in thanksgiving for what God has done and continues to do for us in Jesus Christ. It is also our privilege to recognize and support those who are trained for specific ministries in this congregation. As we recognize and affirm Stephen ministry, our current Stephen ministers and Stephen leaders and Pastor Krista as a Stephen. Leader. Pastor Krista, because of your gifts, your calling, and your training, we charge you with these responsibilities. To spread the word about our Stephen ministry, educate people about what it involves, and cast a vision for this crucial ministry. To assist in the careful recruitment, selection, and training of congregation members with the gifts talents, and character to serve as Stephen ministers, to draw on the resources of our congregation and community to enrich the training and supervision of Stephen ministers in this congregation, to identify members who could benefit from this confidential, caring ministry, to match hurting people with Stephen ministers based on what will best meet their needs, and to supervise these confidential, caring relationships and offer regular opportunities for continued growth in the skills and practice of caring ministry. Pastor Krista, will you assume this ministry in the confidence that it comes from God? If so, respond yes with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Will you nurture the skills you have learned and use them in service to others to support, encourage, and build up people and to enable excellent care while trusting in God's healing? Yes, with the help of God. Members of Hosanna Lutheran Church, will you open your hearts to the ministry of these Stephen leaders and pray for them as servants of Christ? If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Barb Shep, as our council representative here today, we ask, will you lift up the ministry of these trained Stephen leaders by communicating support for Stephen ministry, encouraging people with the appropriate gifts to serve as Stephen leaders, and Stephen ministers, and helping our Stephen ministry have the resources it needs to thrive, thereby helping to equip the saints for ministry. If so, answer, yes, with the help of God. Yes, with the help of God. Let us pray. Gracious God, you have called these people to a new path in caring ministry. You have gifted and empowered them for this task. Grant them joy in their service and a spirit of bold trust in you, that their ministry may stir us to greater caring and more faithful service. Help us all to be both willing servants and thankful recipients of this ministry, so that your name may be glorified, your people live in peace, and your good and gracious will be done. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the Lord of the church 
fill you with the Holy Spirit and guide, bless, and keep you so that you may be faithful in the ministry to which you have been called, gifted, trained, and sent. Amen. And Hester? Hug, hug. Hug, hug. <laughs> and we would like to present you with a token of our appreciation. Um, we have some cards that have come from our former two pastors that were commissioned and worked with us over the years, Pastor Reichmann and Pastor Myers, and greetings from some of the other um, people in our congregation who have served. Oh, so well, this is you. for you, and this is your certificate that says that you completed the training. And just for our congregational members to know, um, Stephen Ministry is, is centered in St. Louis, and because of COVID, they put together a training that could be online, which was wonderful yes. <laughs> for us and for you. And so we just thank you for making this a priority in your life and for completing this. And we are so grateful and, and look forward to working with you. Oh, thank you. I'm excited as well. This is a ministry that has been dear and dear to my heart prior to being here, and I've just never had the opportunity to take part in getting the training. So thank you all. Thank you, dear church, for the opportunity allowing me to do this as well. Thank you. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those who are around you. beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And receive the blessing. May our glorious God give you a spirit of wisdom to know and love the risen Lord Jesus Christ, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Bless and keep you now and forever. Amen.
is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.